Hey guys, so today we are going to be going through a list that I made for my brother. He will be taking care of my animals while I'm gone to Florida next week. So I made out a list that has Saturday to Saturday because we'll be leaving Friday night and then we will be getting back, I think, like really early Sunday morning. So in this video, I'm basically just, it's kind of for him, kind of for you guys because it'll just be showing what I do throughout the week. Um, to keep my animals alive and healthy. Now with uh, feeding the turtles, I just hand feed them. Well, I mainly hand feed the red-eared slider because for some reason, while Lola is interested, she doesn't seem to want to take it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I uh, confused her because I had been feeding her some fish, not like feed her goldfish, but native fish, I'd go catch some, like some minnows, and I would feed it to her because she is a native species. Um, and I, and why, what I mean by uh, confusing her is, ah, ow, ow, ow. That's pretty annoying. But anyway, um, what I mean by confusing her is she might have gotten used to eating fish, and now she doesn't want pellets. Because I would assume that pellets are the second best, or the second best thing. Nah, I want it. Sometimes these bites hurt. It's whatever. Man, for some reason I was talking like super slow. Anyway, I sped it up because it wasn't too important. And then the goldfish down here, she wants, she, he, I don't know. It wants some as well. But what it's gonna get is sinking pellets rather than floating pellets. Yeah, I'll drop some. So I have these right here. Just open these real quick and then just take like a pinch or so or whatever. Just a lot and then kind of just put it all over because there's also a catfish in here and some minnows. Just kind of drop the bunch in. This is a huge tank so there's lots of dilution. So I'm not too worried about overfeeding it or anything. It's pretty much feeding this tank. I'm going to feed the turtles a whole lot more. As you can see, when I drop some in, um, Lola's eating those ones, but she, for some reason, wouldn't take it out of my hand. I think the reason is, is because when she takes it out of my hand, it's really hard, but once it's already been in the water, then it is, um, obviously kind of moistened, and that's basically feeding this tank. Now real quick, I'm doing something really simple, which is just topping off the aquariums with two old water jugs I have. Okay, so now I'm going to be feeding this tank up here. Um, just like a pinch full, basically. Or, I don't normally, sorry, that was my uh, tablet. I normally just kind of dump some in, but a pinch full like that. And then I feed the uh, baby fish every day about half that amount. Okay, so it's more than just um, feeding. This is the uh, tank inside of a tank. These are the um, baby fish in the 10 gallon. So there's also a uh, IV up here that I kind of just water a bunch. I normally wait until it drips into the tank and then I uh, stop watering it. And I think there's only three parts of the plant in here right now because a lot of them it's starting to drip. A lot of them I've taken out just because um, like I've actually put them into terrariums. So that's pretty cool. And then like I said I just take a tiny little bit and what I'll do is I'll take a tiny little bit and then I will just, um, sorry, that was my phone again. I'll just try to break it up as much as I can so then the babies can get to it. And I have baby fish that'll feed off the surface in here and I'll have baby fish that'll feed off the bottom. So there's sinking pellets and flakes in this um, mix in here. Um, and then that's all for this part of the room. Now I've gone to my gecko and my iguana. Now this is something that he probably won't have to do and I don't have it on the list, but it's 
just another thing that I do is I always have to fill this up. And it's helpful because it holds two gallons and this tub is two, or this bucket that I use is two gallons. So, um, oops. It's just a little bit easier just to do that rather than use jugs. And then once I fill it up all the way, I'll put the rest in my iguana's water dish. Real quick, before I go into the gecko and the iguana, I forgot I have to water this terrarium here and feed my dubia roaches. So, it was taking me forever while I was watering the thing, so I sped it up. Basically, what I was saying is that with dubia roaches, I have um, broke even, like, I've made the money back from selling dubia roaches that I spent on buying them and then some more. So, I really like keeping dubia roaches, they're super cool. And I love feeding them to the um, gecko, and they are really not hard to keep at all. So that's basically it. Plus, I'm also showing you that I'm watering my 10-gallon terrarium a lot because I really like the terrarium. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to feed my Dupy Roach colony. So I get a bag of iguana food, and I'll put part of just a piece in with my darkling beetles um, there and then I have some worms right now which I'm glad that I have I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably end up um, letting go the frog when I get back that is if it's still alive it will not eat no matter what I do and it's super malnourished I don't know what to do I just don't know what to do so my my best thought is just to let it go um, so I will be doing that probably when I get back, it, that is, if it's still alive. I bought the worms for it, but there's a high chance that I'll be getting either a gecko or a Cuban tree frog in Florida. Because Cuban tree frogs are really invasive, so are cane toads, so are iguanas, so are... There's a lot of nocturnal gecko species that would be really easy for me to keep, just feed doobie roaches and most likely I want something that I can put in this terrarium, um, which that would be really cool. And I have a list of um, geckos that I'm looking out for. So that's basically my plan. Something that doesn't necessarily need UVB would be really easy to keep and is invasive. That's the main part. I wouldn't get any native species. Um, so then I'm taking a good half of this and I'm putting it in here. I need to put some pieces into these because actually there's probably more um, dubias within those things than on the outside and then I'm going to put the rest of this in with the adult dubia roaches again I really like keeping dubia roaches I think they're super cool um, just a really neat insect and super easy to breed which is um, probably one of the coolest parts and then I just slide this out and I didn't clarify where this was but I'm pretty sure my brother knows where they are um, if not I, I can be in contact with him at any point um, on the trip so he'll just be able to call me if he has any questions so now I'll just take it I have this bowl right here um, I take it and there's normally a bunch of babies in this bowl there might be under it yep there's a few babies under it and there's some carrots and lettuce for them to feast on. I'll probably feed them on Friday or Thursday again. And then they'll be fed next Wednesday by him. I want to show you guys this real quick. It's really cool. Here, let's see if I can find it. So some of my, I still call them babies, ones that have been um, born in my care have become adults now. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, yeah, right here. So you can tell because it still looks pretty young, but this is a female that was once one of the babies. That's how long I've had doobie roaches. It's so cool and just insane to me that this, ew, it pooped on me, came from the babies that I raised, which is really cool. So I'm gonna go wash off my hand and now we can do the iguana and the gecko. Um, I'm gonna hold the iguana in this video, but I'm not gonna have my brother do that because that's a lot harder than holding the gecko and it's really not important in any way. With the gecko, he has to hold it to feed it. Okay, so my guess is that the iguana is going to be more lively than usual. Normally I hold it like 
two or three hours after its light goes out, which its light goes out at six. Today, I'm only doing it an hour after its light's gone out. So, um, the iguana's up here. I'm going to be watering down the terrarium, which is one of the things that my brother will have to do, and I will also be feeding it in the morning, which I think I'll be able to film that and get it into this video. I'm gonna take this water, like I said, the extra water, and I'll just dump it in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll just take, move this all the way over, make sure it's, it's still not perfect, but it works. Um, eventually it probably won't once the iguana gets to a uh, big enough size that you'll just be able to knock it over. But I think we have a year or two until that happens. So um, it's pretty nice. I like the system. So now it is kind of annoying to water it, to be honest. That's something I don't really like. That's why I have this uh, humidifier always going into my iguana's cage. And it really seems to keep the ground quite moist. And the isopods are really thriving in here. So is the iguana. He's always eating. Um, again, he's been way nicer. You can see him. He really likes that, don't you, buddy? I'm just spraying him down. Now, he probably especially likes it today because I think he's been shedding. One thing that's kind of annoying is I put this um, thing that's connected to the back, a uh, pot, and... Um, it's right below him. So I kind of normally open this side and I'll spray down the whole terrarium just from this side. The nice thing about this is that you can kind of move it around so you can get the side, you can get, you know, all those parts really easily um, and how long this is. But back there, it's really hard to get because he's always over there. And um, so if I was gonna tra change something, I'd probably put the pot more like right here. So then it'd be really easy to water. Um, so now, like I said, I'm just spraying it down. I got to make sure I do this, not only for his humidity, but like I said, the uh, isopods. And I really, I have a huge colony of them in here, and I don't want to mess that up in any way. So I spray down the back and everything, just trying to make sure there's a lot of um, water in it. And then once I'm done, I'll take out the iguana. Um, also, I have this avocado tree that doesn't seem to be, um, it's not necessarily growing but it's not died yet, so I'm hoping that it'll um, sh shoot out some leaves and the iguana won't eat them. I guess the trees might be like toxic, but he's eaten one of the leaves before and he's fine, um, so he probably will just leave it alone. But I'm hoping it'll grow up in here and it'd be really cool, um, especially since it's kind of bent how it is. So now I'm gonna get him out, if he's gonna let me, we'll see. I want to start getting them out like more uh, closer to when his light goes off because I get him out after his light goes off because you just I need him to cool down or he's just gonna race around his cage and I don't normally have time for that but what I need to do is I just need to chase him catch him and then get him while he's still warm and ready to uh, move around because my ultimate goal is to be able to get him out at any time um, so then I can mainly just to show people because I think that'd be really cool. See, he's, he doesn't like this. He's going to smack me if I get close. See, like I said, I might not be able to get him out. We'll see how this goes. He'll probably just run to the other side. That's my best bet, <laughs> my best guess. But, like I said, I've been working with him and I'm not afraid of him, so... Yeah, he's just kind of crazy. He's fine. Um, he just doesn't want to be held, I guess. Okay, I'm going to leave him. That's fine. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, but when I generally do hold him, he seems to be he seems to be doing a lot better. He's just normally not this warm. I probably should have been a little bit faster with putting the um, towel on him, but it's fine. Now I'll be moving on to the gecko. So I'm gonna wait a little while for the lights to go out and then I will feed Real quick, this is what I do to feed the iguana in the morning. I'll just take one of the baggies from the bottom of the fridge and I just pop it in right in front of here. Just like that and then he'll eat it. I know that I've done this in a video before, um, 
Well, I fed the gecko in the video before as well. But I don't think my brother has time to watch my videos. So I'll tell him about this one for reference just in case he has any trouble. And that's the real reason I'm making it. Plus, I'm doing this stuff anyway. So, um, you know, content, I guess. So now, so I washed out the bowl, um, the gecko's bowl with all the old food in it. And I clean it off. I need to hurry up because my battery is pretty low um, on my phone. And then I take this. Here, I'm gonna speed. I spilled the food on accident. Put the bag of food away too early, didn't get enough food, then I needed to put more water and then more food. It was kind of annoying. Okay, so um, now I'm going to get him out and I'll just feed him right in front of his cage. Um, I have this stool so I can get up here because it's so high up in my room because um, it's on top of my iguana's cage so now he it's pretty easy for to spot him because I always know where he is because I will you know constantly have to watch after him and I kind of just um, I don't know if you guys can see him but I'm gonna get him out so um, I kind of just make it so eventually he walks on my hands and I can lift him out because he'll just use my hands as a, a branch. So he's crawling out here um, on his own. I want to get him out. I could just feed him inside, but for the video, I'm going to get him out. Trying to pick him up. It's kind of hard sometimes with this cage. What I'm really hoping for is someday um, when my iguana is too big for his cage, I will be able to make it into a tropical. I mean, it is a tropical terrarium, but right now it doesn't have as many plants as it could because the iguana is um, a herbivore and it eats plants. Um, geckos are omnivores. I mean, not all geckos. Crested geckos are omnivores, except the fact that they also, um, they don't eat, like, leaves. They eat fruit. So, um, that's why we have, like, a complete gecko diet, because it's made of fruit, and mine has added insects, but eventually I'll get one that doesn't have added insects. So I'll just take him out like this. So here he is right here. Um, now, I'll put him out. I like to get him. Um, I'll get him out just like this. And then he doesn't seem super interested in moving around today. We'll see how hungry he is. I need to make sure I get him in shot. Okay, so there we go. Now I'll just put the food out in front of him and We'll see how hungry he is today. He's really been chowing down the last few times I've fed him. And he's grown a ton recently. Um, I'd say he's about half the size of an adult right now, I think. Around that size. Um, I mean, he's, he's definitely a couple inches. I'm not exactly sure. I've never really measured him. But I think adults will be around 8 inches. So as you can see, I'm just holding him like this. Now normally, he'll be a little bit more active and wanting to go. Now you see that? He just turned away. To me, that means he wants to go back in his cage. He's done eating. So um, you'll know when he's done, he just is done. And um, normally what I'll do is I'll get him out and he'll just crawl around just like this before I feed him. And then once he eventually just stops, then I'll feed him. And then once he's ready to go, I will put him back. So now I just set him back in the top of his cage, let him walk right onto the leaves, just like that. And then I'll put his food, he might try to get out, which is fine, I'll just make sure he doesn't. I'll put the food right here, and then I'll just put it right back on top where it goes. Make sure that he's not up, can't get hurt by it. And that's pretty much it. Normally he'll eat more, but I just feed him as much as he wants. 
Now I'm just spraying down the whole terrarium um, with all my beautiful tropical plants like pothos, snake plant, um, wandering juice, stuff like that. And then I am wiping it off with I just use a t-shirt. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns, put in the comments below. And if you're more content, then subscribe. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.